Let's take a look at programming language news from 2025. Let's start with Python, which had its yearly release, this time was 3.14. Some interesting things in this release was that FreeThread of Python is now officially supported. It's not the default, but it might be, and they might just drop the gill entirely in the future, that is, the global interpreter lock. This has been a very long time coming. They also have an experimental JIT release, not recommended for production use, and might not even make your code faster at this point, but it's still an interesting development. In the world of JavaScript, we can see the latest accepted proposals for the ECMAScript standard. Not a lot this year. I found this is one of the interesting things they added though, which was a sum precise method that can add up a sequence of both very large and very small floating point values. And instead of rounding out that small value, you get the actual result you think you should have got. Some other languages, standard libraries already have this, and it's a nice addition to JavaScript. And of course, when people are writing JS these days, they're often using it through TypeScript, which had its usual slew of releases. Maybe most interesting is the work on the upcoming TypeScript 7, which is a rewrite of the TypeScript compiler in Go, no longer being self-hosted in TypeScript itself. Well, once they get it done at least. And they claim to have made large progress, including already having editor and language server support in the new Go-based TypeScript compiler. In Java land, we got to see JDK 24 and 25. 24 has made progress in the top level main, providing scripts in Java as opposed to JavaScript. This follows similar features previously released in C-sharp. And JDK 25 is the new long-term support release. And one thing I found interesting from it was continued improvement to the ahead of time caching from the class files you're running. This should make faster startup easier in Java. And speaking of .NET, version 10 came out this past year with C Sharp 14 and F Sharp 10, including better JIT and AOT compilation. And they say that extension members are the headline feature of C Sharp 14, which goes beyond the capabilities of existing extension methods. In the world of C++, they voted into the upcoming C++ 26 standard which makes it a whole new language in some ways. Go saw two releases this past year, 1.24 and 1.25. They don't typically make a lot of language changes these days. The 1.24 does now have generic type aliases. And 1.25 has a new experimental garbage collector that I found interesting, which is supposed to scale better with more CPUs. Rust had quite a number of releases also like usual. Maybe most interesting was earlier in the year when they finalized the Rust 2024 edition. But separate from the language itself, one interesting news item is that as of this past December, Rust in the Linux kernel is no longer experimental. So expect to see more and more Rust in the kernel going forward. That's a very interesting development. And the C language had no new standards this past year, but they did get a whole new official website, which I think is rather pragmatic and pretty. And there is ongoing standardization work. As usual, I recommend seeing the blog of Jeanide Manide, who is great at communicating ongoing standardization efforts and upcoming features for the C language. PHP 8.5 came out, which among other things includes the pipe operator. And Kotlin saw a couple of dot releases, including various improvements to its various backends for Kotlin multi-platform. They also rolled out their new K2 compiler, which improves Kotlin support in the IDE. The R language saw a 4.5 release, which includes some improvements to how you use packages, as well as prioritizing the use of C23 compilers. Swift saw a couple of dot releases as well, primarily focusing on improved concurrency. I sort of want to try this out. Dart also saw some releases. Some sampling of new things includes dot shorthands, such as when accessing enum names when the type is already known. This has been seen in other languages previously, but it's nice to see this getting around. They have improved cross compilation and experimental hot reload on the web. Lua 5.5 came out, and this is not something we see every year. One of the interesting changes is you now can declare global variables explicitly if you want. Ruby 4.0 came out, it's a big number. Some of the changes include the experimental Ruby box for isolating such things as monkey patches. They also have an experimental new JIT and various other changes and improvements, including some language changes. Scala 3.7 came out with named tuples and other updates. And something I found interesting is that going forward, they plan to raise the minimum JDK version to 17, dropping support for Java 8. 
And the Godot engine had a couple of releases this past year. And in its own language, GDScript, they added typed dictionaries, variadic functions, and abstract classes and methods. They've also updated their .NET support to 8.0. Now getting into C alternative languages, Zig saw some releases, including 0.14, which has this very interesting labeled switch, sort of like a state machine loop, but because these branches can be unconditional branches, almost like just a plain go to, they get more efficient code generation out of it. They've also dropped async and await keywords and are moving toward what they think will be their final solution for concurrency and Zig. Now, in terms of project management, this was also interesting because GitHub has been pushing artificial intelligence so much and Zig has an anti AI policy. They've moved their development from GitHub to Codeberg. I'm curious if other projects might do similar things in the future. Odin saw continued development this past year as well. The language is relatively stable, but there are changes that happen sometimes. C3 also saw some releases in 2025, including adding one of my favorite things, struct splatting. NIM saw ongoing development, as did Crystal. And V, which just had its 0.5 release right at the end of the year. Julia 1.12 came out, which in addition to various other changes, continues to improve binary application export. Closure is a Lisp for the Java Virtual Machine. Been well known for a number of years. It has ongoing development. But perhaps more interesting at the moment to me is the Jank language, which is Closure, but for C++ instead of Java. I'm very curious to see where this goes. Racket 9.0 came out last year and it introduces parallel threads. Haskell continued to see work as well last year, including the Haskell language server. And OCaml has had ongoing releases as well. Now in the ML space, a language I like to follow is Grain, which looks a lot like JavaScript, but acts a lot like ML and compiles to Wasm. One small thing I saw in the 0.7 release is how they parse infix operator chaining. Before, you had to put your operator at the end of the line so the compiler knew that you were continuing on the next. Now they have a bit of look ahead to the next line to see if they think you're continuing. And I find it interesting they found this an important change to make for usability. As usual, Erlang slash OTP had a new major release. And in the Beam space, Elixir had releases as well, including enhanced static type checking and four times faster compilation for large projects. Gleam also compiles to the Beam or to JavaScript. And Gleam is rather stable language-wise, but they have ongoing releases for improved tooling, or in this case, better external annotations for interfacing to other languages. And one interesting thing I found in their releases this past year was generation of faster JavaScript, which basically they're doing by improving their code gen from pattern matching. Instead of a simple list of else ifs, they now try to optimize a nested tree of condition checking which apparently does make a big difference. And one language I love to follow is Hacks. It's one of the well-known languages for compiling to lots of other languages, primarily for the purpose of cross-platform application development. They're working on a Hacks 5.0, which apparently will have some backward incompatible changes, and they're also working on coroutines. I'm eager to see where this goes. And in a slightly related space, I'm happy to announce what I've been working on for my day job for the past few years, and that's the temper programming language. Temper also compiles to a number of other different languages, but it's not for the purpose of cross-platform application development. It's for the purpose of cross-language library development. We just went open source last week, which is why I'm telling you about it now. So for example here, if you define a function half in Temper, you can generate C-sharp, Java, JavaScript with type annotations, Lua, Python, Rust, and we're working on more for the future. We've designed Temper from the ground up to be both modern and pleasant, but also to be able to generate idiomatic and usable libraries in all these other languages. So the idea is that you can write your logic or algorithm or library or component one time instead of for every language you want to use it in. And there are different ways to try to solve this problem, but Temper offers a fresh new take on how to go about it. I've already started moving some of my own hobby development work to Temper since our open sourcing last week. But meanwhile, that's a quick summary of programming language news from 2025. I missed lots of languages and lots of details from these languages. So feel free to leave comments on this video. And if you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Bye y'all.